Okay, in this video we're going to factorize the top and bottom of each fraction and then cross cancel common factors. Here's example 1, 2, 3, 4 and example 5. And please use the index on the left if you want to see a particular example at some point. And we'll start with example 1, 2x minus 6 all over 2. It looks simple enough, but the there, there's one method I'd we need to learn for, for that will cover all of the problems in this section. And that is to factorize the top and bottom and then cross cancel common factors. So the correct way to do this is to actually factorize, well the bottom can't be factored, but just factorize the top. And how would you factorize the top? You pull a, pull a 2 out, right? So that would be, um, so you say 2 times what gives x, 2 times, or it gives 2x, 2 times x gives 2x, 2 times what gives negative 6, negative 3, right? So we have all this all over 2, okay? And now the point is that we have 2 times x minus 3 all over 2, okay? Things being multiplied all across the top and all across the bottom, and we can cross cancel. So this is just like having, for example, 2 times 5 all over 2. 2 times x minus 3 over 2 is just, it's, it's, it's like having 2 times some number over 2. You know, in this case, this would be, of course, 10 over 2, which is 5. In other words, you can cross-cancel the 2s and get 5. And similarly here, we can cross-cancel the 2s and get x minus 3. So the answer here is x minus 3, you know, x minus 3 over 1, which is, so it's simply x, the answer is simply x minus 3, okay? Now, that's the matter we want to use, and that's the answer, but the, the problem is most people, when they see 2x minus 6, they do um, all sorts of mistakes. One common error is to cross-cancel the 2s and to write that as 1 times x minus 6, so 1x minus 6 all over 1, which, of course, becomes x minus 6. Now, first of all, this is not the same thing as the correct answer, which was x minus 3. Now, wh how can we understand that we made a wrong mistake? We made a mistake here by cross-canceling the 2s. We need to understand why we're not allowed to do that, okay? And the reason is, and we'll just... Now just bear with me here and please understand what I'm saying when I say let x equal 10. I'm saying just imagine x was the number 10. If x was the number 10, we would have 2 times x, which is 20, right? Minus 6 all over 2. Now 20 minus 6 over 2, I hope you understand, is definitely um, 14 over 2, isn't it? 20 minus 6 is 14, and over 2, and that gives us what? 7. So 7 is the correct answer, okay? 7 is the answer to this. If I cross-canceled 2s here, like 2 into 2 goes 1, so 2 to that gives me 10, right? If I did that, then I would have 10 minus 6 all over 1, which, of course, is 10 minus 6, just like x minus 6, and that is 4. Now, what is 20 minus 6 over 2? Is it 14 or is it 4? Which one? What do you think? Well, it has to be 7, doesn't it? Because it's telling us to, you know, this fraction is saying, look, I want you to go 20 minus 6 and get 14 and then divide by 2. That's what it's saying to us, okay? So this is, the correct answer is 7. The correct answer is not 4, okay? The mistake we made is this. We cross-canceled terms. We cross-cancel things that were being added or subtracted. We're not allowed to cross-cancel terms, only factors. What we could have done, just so you know, is went like this. 20 minus 6 over 2, you could factorize the top, pull um, 2 out, 2 times 10 minus 3 all over 2, and that looks a lot like what we did. 2 times x minus 3 over 2, remember that? And that, of course, means we can cross-cancel the 2s, and the answer is 10 minus 3, which, of course, is 7. So the answer is 10 minus 3, just like how we found the answer here to be x minus 3. So the point is that we can cross 
cancel factors, not terms. Okay, and that, that's an important point to note. Factors are things being multiplied by each other. Terms are things being added and subtracted. We have to factorize everything in the fractions, and then we can cross-cancel them. We can't cross-cancel terms. For example, if we have 3x plus 12 over 3x minus 15, we have to factorize the top and then factorize the bottom, and then we can cross-cancel common factors. Okay, so how would you factorize the top on this? We've got 3x plus 12. Can you pull out a common factor there? Can you pull a 3 out and put up your parentheses? 3 times what gives 3x? 3 times x, right? 3 times what gives 12? 3 times plus 4, right? And on the bottom, we can, what can we pull out of each term here? So we can pull a 3 out again, right? 3 times what? 3 times x gives 3x, and 3 times negative 5 gives negative 15. So what we're, we're, this is the correct method. We're factoring the top and bottom. Now we have common factor, we have factors on the top and bottom, okay? We have things being multiplied on the top and bottom, and we can cross cancel these common factors here, the 3s. And the answer we get is x plus 4 over x minus 5, okay? And these are not common factors, so we cannot go any further. We're done. This is lowest terms. The, this, is, this is putting this fraction in lowest terms, we get that, basically. It's simplifying that rational expression, or putting that fraction in lowest terms. Now, the common error on this, we have to not only know what it is and not do it, but also understand why we're not doing it, because when you understand things then they stay in your long-term memory so when you take college algebra you'll remember not to do this you know because you understand why why you don't do it instead of just memorizing everything so um, the common error of course is to do something like this one of the common errors is to look oh I've got 3x here and 3x here I'll just cross those guys off and my answer is 1 plus 12 over 1 minus 15, my answer is 13 over negative 14. Now, the answer is x plus 4 over x minus 5, not 13 over negative 14. This is absolutely incorrect, okay? And the mistake was we cross-canceled, we cross-canceled terms, okay? We cross-canceled when there was a plus, things that were being added and subtracted on the top and bottom, okay? That's completely wrong. And if you wanted to have a look at that with numbers, if we just let x be 10, just for example, just for example, if x happened to be the number 10, 3x would be 30. So you'd have 30 minus, you know, 30 plus 12, let's say, over 30 minus 15, okay? And the, um, the correct way to do this, of course, is to factor the top and bottom and then cross-cancel. You know, or, or, I mean, you could, I mean, really, you could just add it together and, you know, you could just get, um, uh, let's see, 30 and 12 is, um, uh, where am I going to put that, 42, right, over 30 minus 15 is 15, okay. Now, 3 into that goes um, once and 1 over goes, oh, sorry, 4 into that, or uh, 3 that goes uh, 14 times and 3 into that goes 5 times. So this actually is equal to 14 over 5, okay? That's the correct answer, 14 over 5. Now, the incorrect thing to do, so, so it's 14, whoops, over 5 is the correct answer. So the incorrect thing to do is to cross-cancel the 30s and get, you know, 1 plus 12 over 1 minus 15, which is 13 over, you know, once again, negative 14. Now, the answer is 14 over 5, obviously, because it's 42 over 15, which gives 14 over 5. It's definitely not this. We should be able to see that. And if you even even had it just for fun, had a factor at the top, you know, and pull, say, yeah, we, let's see, we'll just pull a 3 out just for fun, okay? And you get 3 times 10 plus 4, and then pull a 3 out of the bottom, and it's 3 times 10 minus 5, okay? And then the 3s cross cancel, okay? 
and you get 10 plus 4 over 10 minus 5, which of course is 14 over 5, which is the correct answer. Okay, So factoring the top and bottom and then cross-canceling common factors gives us the correct answer, not cross-canceling uh, common cross-canceling terms. So we cannot cross-cancel terms. If things are being added and subtracted, we're not left to cross-cancel. If things are being multiplied all the way across on the top and bottom, then we can cross-cancel, and this is the way to do it, and this is not. Okay? Very important point. That's the whole, whole one of the most important things about this section. Probably the most important thing. Okay? So, the rest is just review. If you understand that... Oh, by the way, just to show you... Uh, when we let x be 10, we ended up with, look at this, 10 plus 4 over 10 minus 5. And that's just like x plus 4 over x minus 5, isn't it? Anyway, just an interesting point. But, um, so, you know, the rest is easy. Because we know how to factorize these things, then we cross-cancel common factors, then we're done. So all we have to do when we simplify this guy is to factorize the top which is a short method, of course, isn't it? And then factorize the bottom, and then you're done. Just cross-cancel common factors, and you have the answer. So it's the most important thing is to understand that you're not allowed to cross-cancel these x squareds off. So, I mean, they, they just, you, you know, once again, x squared plus 5x plus 4 over x squared plus x. You're not allowed to cross-cancel the x squareds. Why? Why can't you do that? These are terms. They're being added. You cannot cross-cancel things that are being added. You can only cross-cancel things that are being multiplied together. Okay, So this is incorrect. And um, we've seen a couple of examples with numbers of how you don't get the right answer when you do that. And that, that always applies. If you ever cross-cancel terms, your answer will be completely wrong. Okay, So in any case, we just uh, factorize this with the short method. And you just go 1 times 4 or uh, 2 times 2. Find two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5. Well, plus 1 and plus 4, isn't it? And then just uh, factorize the bottom. Now we have an x squared plus x. Whenever we see an x squared term and an x term, what method do we use to factorize? Don't we pull out a common factor? x goes into both terms, doesn't it? x times what gives x squared? x times x, right? x times what gives x? Remember, that's just a 1x, isn't it? x times 1, isn't it? And check that. Look, x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. So don't be afraid to check your factoring to make sure you're doing it right. So the bottom becomes x times x plus 1. Now, we did both steps. We um, factorized the top and bottom. We can now cross-cancel common factors. So we can put this in parentheses, too, if you like, just to show that we have this times this over this times this. These are, you know, and the common factors here, we have common factors, which is this quantity x plus 1 is exactly the same as this quantity x plus 1. See that? And the answer is 1 times the x plus 4, which is x plus 4, all over x times 1, which is just x. So the answer is x plus 4 over x. Now, my question to you is, Okay, I've got x plus 4 over x. Why can't I cross-cancel these x's? Why can't I cross-cancel these guys? Because they this is a term. These guys are being added. We can't cross-cancel terms. We can only cross-cancel factors. Okay? If things are being added or subtracted, we cannot cross-cancel them. So this is the final answer, just x plus 4 all over x. Okay? So example 4 x squared minus 9 over 5x squared minus 15x. You have to figure out how to factorize these two expressions. Okay. By the way, there's example 4, and I'll put example 5 on screen now, just in case you get these guys done fast and, and correctly. That's fine. So when you see x squared minus 9, we have an x squared term and a number. And there's a subtraction in the middle. So you should suspect that that is a difference of squares uh, problem. And it is. And, and when you see that, you, just, you can just write x squared plus 0x minus 9. 
and now factorize this trinomial with the short method because this is the same thing as this. We have just rewritten it, put in 0x to help us out and now we can use the short method and factorize that. Right. So we just list the pairs of factors of 9, 1 times 9, 3 times 3, what two numbers multiply to negative 9 and add to 0. Write them down. And then it'll be written in here with the short method, right? So isn't it positive 3 and negative 3? They add to 0 and they multiply to give negative 9. What about the bottom? 5, 5x squared minus 15x. Well, we can pull a 5 out from both terms, can't we? Does x also go into both terms? See, so you have an x squared term and an x term that's always pull out the common factor method, right? So you can pull out the 5x from both terms, okay? 5x times what gives 5x squared? 5x times x, right? Minus 5x times what gives ne gives negative 15x? Is it just negative 3, right? So the bottom here we have simply 5x times x minus 3. Now, can we cross cancel common factors in this expression? Yep, because look, we have this is just, you know, 5 times x times x minus 3 on the bottom. And on the top, we have x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now, the x minus 3 is the same thing as this x minus 3. And they cross cancel to give 1s. And the answer is simply x plus 3 over 5x. Now, if you're wondering why these are the same thing, well, let's think about this. You know, once again, you know, they, okay, why is x, why can we cross cancel x minus 3 and x minus 3? Well, once again, let's just imagine that x happened to be the nice number 10, the nice number 10. Then we would have 10 minus 3 over 10 minus 3, which of course is 7 over 7, isn't it? And we know we can cross cancel 7 over 7, right? So similarly, just for fun, you could cross cancel 10 minus 3 over 10 minus 3 because it's the same quantity. You know, if x was the nice number of 194, you would have 194 minus 3 over 194 minus 3. Now, I don't even have to subtract those to know that this is the same quantity. I mean, this is the same thing as this, so I can just cross-cancel them because they're the same number. Right? I mean, if you want, you can write that 191 over 191, and then you can cross-cancel the same number there and there, and we end up with 1. But anyway, the point is, no matter what the number is, x minus 3 over x minus 3 can be cross-cancelled because they're the same quantity. They're the same number. They always it's x minus 3 is the same thing as x minus 3. Whereas um, x plus 3 and x minus 3, they cannot be cross-cancelled. Okay, these are not the same quantity. For example, if x was 10, this would be 10 plus 3 over 10 minus 3, right? Now that is 13 over 7. Now 13 and 7 cannot be cross-canceled at all, can they? Or, you know, if x was 100, you would have 100 plus 3 over 100 minus 3, and that would be, of course, 103 over 97. And once again, these guys are not the same number, so they can't be cross-canceled, right? So x plus 3 and x minus 3 are not the same quantity, so the only way to simplify that is to write it like this, x plus 3 over x minus 3, okay? So just for a little bit of practice before we move on, could you please simplify um, if you had x plus 4 over x plus 4, what does that equal to? And what's this equal to? x minus 5 over x plus 5. Okay, well on the top one, we've got the same quantity on the top and bottom. So these guys can be cross-canceled. So we have 1 over 1, the answer is 1. No matter what x is, we have the same quantity on the top and bottom, so they can be cross-canceled. Okay, however here, x minus 5 is not the same thing as x plus 5, so this is simply x minus 5 over x plus 5, and that's the only, that's the simplest way to write that fraction, okay? And why can't we cross-cancel the x's? 
and the fives? Because they are terms, we're adding and subtracting on the top and bottom. So we can't cross cancel the x's or the fives to get anything. So th it's it's already in simplest form, right? Okay, so example five then, press pause on the video and try this one yourself and then I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it now. X squared minus one. This is actually a, different, a difference of squares uh, expression and you can write that x squared plus zero x plus zero x minus one. And what two numbers multiply to negative one and add to zero? Well, one is one times one. And if I had what two numbers multiply to negative one and add to zero? What two integers? How about a negative one and a positive one? That works, doesn't it? They add to zero, they multiply to negative one. Okay. And on the bottom here, you know, this one can be written one times one. And it's a short method. And we're asking what two numbers multiply to one and add to negative two? How about it? If you have a negative one and a negative one, Negative 1 and negative 1 add to negative 2, and they multiply to give positive 1. Okay, So that's how these guys factorize, and then we can cross-cancel common factors. Now, the only common factors we have are, you know, x minus 1 and x minus 1. Okay, So the answer to this is simply x plus 1 all over x minus 1. And can we simplify this any further? No, because they're not the same quantity. So x plus 1 and x minus 1 are completely different, so the answer is just that. You're done.